Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we look at God's word together, spending meaningful moments with the master. This entire week, our focus has been on spiritual blindness, things that are right there that we just don't see. And God says, why don't you open your eyes instead of calling on me, open up your eyes and see what I've already done. You just don't see it. So sometimes God has answered the prayers, but we are blind and can't see it. So we have to pray, God, open my eyes that I might see. Overcoming spiritual blindness. Today, I want to share a thought with you about how to look beyond past failures, because past failures can blind us. Because we fail in the past, we can say, well, I just can't do it. It's just not for me. But there might be some reasons why we failed in the past. And we need to open our eyes to see those reasons so that we can succeed in the present and on into the future. There's a wonderful story in Luke chapter five. It's a kind of a comical story when you think about it, when you really understand what's going on. It's Luke chapter five, verses one through 11. And let me read it to you from the message translation. And this is what it says. Once he was standing on the shore of Lake Genesaret, the crowd was pushing in on him to better hear the word. So everybody's out there hearing Jesus preach. Big old crowd. And they're pushing Jesus almost to the water's edge. He noticed two boats tied up. The fishermen had just left them and they were out scrubbing their nets. King James says mending their nets. He climbed into the boat that was Simon's and asked him to put out a little from the shore. So he's gonna borrow Peter's boat and turn it into a pulpit. He's gonna borrow it. Listen to me, anytime Jesus wants something from you, give it to him. I'll explain that in a moment. If Jesus wants something from you, give it to him. Amen. Don't forget that. He borrows Peter's boat, pushes out from the shore, sitting there using the boat for a pulpit. He taught the crowd. When he finished teaching, he said to Simon, push out into deep water, let your nets out for a catch. Simon said, Master, we've been fishing hard all night, which is his way of saying, I'm tired, Jesus, and haven't caught even a minnow. But if you say so, I'll let out the nets. It was no sooner said then done a huge haul of fish straining the net past capacity they waved to their partners in the other boat to come and help them they filled both boats nearly swapping them with the catch simon peter when he saw it fell to his knees before jesus master leave i'm a sinner and can't handle this holiness leave me to myself when they pulled in that catch of fish, all overwhelmed Simon and everyone with him. It was the same with James and John, Zebedee's son, co-workers with Simon. Jesus said to Simon, there's nothing to fear from now on. You'll be fishing for men and women. They pulled their boats up on the beach, left them nets and all, and followed him. Amen. I want you to notice, first of all, that that night Peter experienced failure. He said to Jesus, we have fished all night. We have worked hard all night fishing and have not caught a minnow. Now, that's important because fishing was not a hobby for Peter. It was not his sideline. It was his main line. It is how he paid the bills. It is how he put food on the table. He was a fisherman by trade, both he and his brother, Andrew. And he had not had success all night fishing, hoping to catch something and didn't catch it. Have you been throwing out your nets, hoping to catch something and you haven't caught anything? You threw out your net in the job, the, 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 the water of job possibilities, pull up your nets and you don't even have a minnow. Some of you have thrown out your nets in relationships, and that's okay because you maybe are tired of being single when you know that you've been made to be married. And you threw out your nets, thought you had somebody, and that person you thought you had wasn't even a minnow. It was seaweed. 
What do you do when you've had failure? Well, the thing I like about Peter is that he was that morning out there cleaning his nets, mending his nets. He was cleaning his nets. He was not ending his nets. He was not folding up his nets and saying, well, I didn't catch anything, so I'm just going to give up. And just because you failed all night and failed, uh, faith says, I don't give up. In fact, that's what faith is. It's it's patience. And the word patience, uh, what macro thermos literally means endurance to keep on keeping on when you don't catch anything. You still remain hopeful. Well, that morning, Jesus was out there preaching and the crowds from the various villages came out and they just piled out and Jesus backed up to accommodate more people and he kept on backing up to accommodate more people. And if he backed up a little bit more, he was going to be standing in the lake. So he sees some boats. One of them is owned by Peter. He steps into the boat that's owned by Peter and uses it as a makeshift improv improvised pulpit. Peter allowed Jesus to use the boat. My God. And always remember that when you give something to Jesus, you're about to get blessed. Give it to Jesus. He's going to bless you. And then after Jesus finished preaching, three things happened. Three things. Three things Jesus told them to do. And it's easy to remember. My God, easy to remember. You preach this to somebody. It's because it's easy to remember. And the person I want you to preach it to primarily is yourself. And this are the th these are the three things that happened. First of all, Jesus said, push out. Push out. Look at verse 4. It said in verse 4, they've been fishing all night. When he finished teaching, he said to Simon, push out into deep water. He just didn't say push out in the shallow water. He said, push out into deep water and let your nets out for a catch. Stop here. Push out into deep water. Don't fish in shallow water. Many times God doesn't bless us because we think too small. God wants us to think large. And maybe the blessings that you didn't, you didn't catch anything because you've been fishing in the shallow waters of possibilities. You've been dreaming too small. And God says, I'm not going to give you that because you're bigger than that. I'm not going to let you have this person because you are. this person will bring you down. I'm not going to give you that job because you were made for something better than that job. And it is only when you go out into deep water, push out into deep water, take a risk that makes you uncomfortable. That's when I'm going to bless you. So he had to venture out, push out into deep water. Never forget, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Push out into deep water. My God. And he's 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 doing it. He's going to do what the Lord says do. He pushes out into deep water. But then there's something else. First of all, the first thing I want you to notice is Jesus said to push out. And then the second thing, this is an easy outline, is put down. Put down. Put down what? Well, look at verse 4 again. Verse 4 says, when he finished teaching, he said, push out into deep water and let your nets out or push down your nets. No, they were busy cleaning their nets. They were already tired. They had cleaned the nets. The kitchen is closed, Jesus. We've cleaned the nets. And here Jesus is saying, unfold them, take them out. Again, let's go fishing again out in deep water. Now, this is where the faith kicks in. The faith kicks in. I mean, it was, it was not really nothing to push out because they didn't know what Jesus was really wanting them to push out for. But to put down your nets, well, that took faith. Why? Because everyone knew that you didn't fish in the daytime because the fish always go under, hard to catch them in the hot sun. You fished at night when they came up to the surface of the water. So what Jesus was telling them to do was against tradition. It was against tradition. And sometimes God may call upon you to do something that no one has ever done before. That's what it means to be out in deep water. Push out. Put down. 
and not only was it against tradition, but um, fatigue. They'd worked hard all night and caught nothing. When you worked hard all night, especially when you're frustrated, guess what you want to do? What just what you want to do? You want to go home and get some rest. But Jesus is saying, I want you to do double duty. I know you're fatigued, but keep on pushing out and put down. And then here's something else that I know Peter had to overcome, and that is who's the professional? Who's the professional? Peter is the professional. Jesus is a carpenter. Peter is a fisherman by trade. Peter uh, been fishing these waters all his life. He he was on the cover of fishing magazines. He was uh, he had trophies on fishing. But yet Jesus told him to do something and he didn't tell Jesus, "Look, you stay in your lane." Jesus told him to do something that was irrational, non-traditional and he was fatigued and he did it anyway. And not only did he do it, but he was doing it in the midst of a crowd. Remember, there's a big crowd out there watching Peter out there fishing, fishing in the hot sun. The people are probably saying, what's wrong with Peter? Is he sunstroke? What's he doing out there fishing in the day? You don't catch fish. And many times we don't push put down because we're afraid of what people may say about us. You've got to overcome the fear of what people say about you because people, as I said yesterday, are fickle. My God. But notice what Peter says, even though everything was against him, even though he had caught nothing, even though he had failed the previous night, even though he was tired. Look at verse five. Verse five says this. Simon said, Master, we've been fishing hard all night. In other words, we're tired and have caught, haven't caught even a middle. We're frustrated. But if you say so, if you say so, even though tradition is against it, my body says no. The crowd's going to make fun of us uh, because you say so. I'll let down my nets and notice what happened. Remember, it's a simple outline. Push out. Push out into deep water. Maybe you don't catch anything because you're too, it's too easy and God wants something better for you. Always remember God's dream for your life is much greater than your dream for your own life. Push out. Put down, let your nets down. And then here's the third point. Push out, put down, pull in, pull in. Look at verse six. Verse six says this, my God, what a word. It was no sooner said than done, a huge haul of fish straining the nets Past, stop here, past capacity. So they pushed out, they put down, and now they're pulling in so many fish that the nets can't contain the fish. Fish started coming from Catfish Boulevard and from Perch Place and from uh, uh, every corner of that lake started flowing and listen to me, they were always there. It's not like God threw some fish into the lake. And so, you know, you have some lakes that are stocked lakes. This was not a stocked lake. It was always there. And th the blessings you're looking for is always there. You're blind to them. God wants to open your eyes. You're blind to them. You can't see them, but they were there. And you know the difference? Here's the difference. He didn't catch anything all night because he was doing it on his own. He's catching something now because who's in the boat with him? Jesus. And when Jesus is in your boat, you start catching some things. And I believe that they caught so many fish because in the beginning of the story, Peter loaned Jesus his boat. And anything you give to Jesus, Jesus, given it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and multiplied. They had so many fish that Peter had to have people to come and help him. His others were called. And that's, that's, in other words, he became a channel of blessings to other people. It says they waved to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. They filled both boats, nearly swamping them with the catch. My God, because God wants to put you in a position, not only that you're blessed, but you can be a channel of blessings, amen, to other people. And I want you to think about it. Peter loaned Jesus the boat at the beginning of the story, and Jesus gave him a huge haul of fish 
for the rental fee. That's the rental fee. And it's the largest catch he has ever had to take care of his family. And then Jesus gave him an even greater assignment. Look, if you will, at verse 11 as we close. Verse 11 says, excuse me, verse 10 says, it was, the, it was the same with James and John, Zebedee's son, co-workers with Simon. Jesus said to Simon, this is nothing, you, there is nothing to fear. From now on, you'll be fishing for men and women. He at one time was only fishing for fish. Now he's fishing for people. He's going to be helping people. And whenever you obey God, God will move you from one lake to the world to do even greater things. God, that potential to do great things was always in Peter, but he needed Jesus to help him see what he could become. And that's why we need God to open up our eyes so that we can overcome our spiritual blindness and see, my God, I've been limiting myself, but this is the same Peter who's going to preach on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 souls would be added to the church. The same Simon Peter. God's going to make him a great, great man that we're talking about today. And God wants to do the same thing for you. But don't forget, this whole started, this story started with failure. It started with fishing all night and caught nothing. But it ended up with unimaginable possibilities. And Peter can say, you know what? It started off as a failure, but look at where I am now. And God can use anything to bless you. Even your failures can be a tremendous source of blessings. If you want, push out. Quit living in a shallow way. Dream big. Now that him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you're able to ask or think. Push out. Put down. Sometimes it doesn't make any sense, but put down your nets. Push out. Put down. God will fill those nets. And then you just pull in what God has blessed you with so that you can be a channel of blessing to somebody else. Ask God to open your eyes to spiritual possibilities. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful week. And from this point on, when we pray, once we ask you for something Help us to also pray, God, open our eyes that we might see it when it comes. Give us spiritual insight and illumination. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with me today. In fact, this entire week, I hope you've been blessed. And uh, if you don't have a church home, everyone needs a church home. Uh, I would love to be your pastor and your brother. Uh, and uh, so contact us. We will get back with you uh, at uh, New Start at SSC. <coughs> excuse me, New Start at SSC Live dot org. Well, tomorrow is the Lord's Day. And uh, I hope you will join us in worship tomorrow. The pre-worship experience begins at nine o'clock. Then the actual worship begins at nine thirty. I hope you will join us. You'll be blessed immensely tomorrow. So come uh, and join us tomorrow for worship. And don't forget to invite someone also. In a few weeks, we will all be back here at St. Stephen Church on July the 18th for on-campus worship. But whether you're worshiping on campus or online, the key is this, engagement. Be engaged, engage in the word, be engaged in service. Remember what we talked about yesterday, that we are two-dimensional. We lift up our hands to God in worship. We lift out our hands in service to help other people. So join us tomorrow in worship. God bless you. And until we gather for worship tomorrow, remember during COVID-19 to stay safe, stay sane, and never, never, never forget God is in control. See you tomorrow in worship.